Welcome, everyone, to another glorious episode of your favorite podcast in the world, the Come On Now podcast. My name is Don, not to be confused with Don King. My hair's a lot more lavish. I went to go see my stylist, Renee, today. I'm here with the best backcourt in podcast history. Yes, I said it, the best backcourt in podcast history. My guys, I... Stephen you guys Clay. Oh. Stephen Clay, you guys introduce yourself for the world. Obviously, I'm Steph. <laughs> Obviously, I'm Steph. Rudy's Clay. He benefits off of me. <laughs> I come down, bring the ball up the court, do all the hard work. He stays in the corner, comes up a couple of screens, doesn't have to put the ball on the ground, shoots open shots. Hey, but that's what we all here for. Teamwork, make the dream work. I'm Nick Taylor, baby. Um, three-time CFL champ, former NFL player, for, former AFL player, Division One basketball player, um, the self-proclaimed fastest person in the world ever self-proclaimed i mean could be other people but hey self what matters in life goodness could you could you toot your own horn a little bit more toot toot i can't beep beep uh, uh, um, of course um, of course you can okay and you're damn and you're damn sure not steph because i carry your ass every day um rudy rodriguez showman here the guy that I damn sure ain't draymond no you're not draymond because Dray <laughs> draymond's a bitch uh, um, okay. Dr Dr Draymond's a bitch, just like he calls Kevin Durant. And and I've had my words about Draymond Green, the poverty stricken moron. But uh yeah, let's talk about it, man. I'm happy right, to discuss bang. anything. I'm the one that says what you're thinking, but usually it's offensive, so I don't give a fuck. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Cool. The one the one that says what you're thinking. Okay, cool. Um with that being said, guys, we're gonna go right to the association. Shout out to um Adam Silver. Uh, we're trying to figure out where these games are going to be played on. Can you tell us what the media deal is going to be? That's neither here nor there. Uh, we're going to talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, some people thought they would be swept. I'm not sure if Nick Taylor is a Minnesota uh, Timberwolves fan. I have um, a couple of pair of Anthony Edwards AE1s that came in the mail. I'm a fan now. So what do you guys think? Is it Could they come back? What, what, do you, what are your thoughts? I, I, I did bandwagon to the, to, to the Minnesota team for a week. And then, you know, when it was time to make the pick for the series, I kind of went over there to the Mavericks because I just thought that they have, they have the two best players on the court that would be clutch in the moments when they needed to be clutch. And so far, I've been right, like I usually am about basketball. That's why I know basketball. I talk basketball, and Rudy comes in. He tells me little things, but he's usually wrong. But, hey, this time, I'm right again. I said the Mavericks will win this series in six, and I still believe that even when – the Minnesota Timberwolves has been down 3-0. I said this series will end in six. Um, for the simple reason, man, you cannot trust Carl Anthony Towns, man. It's just something about him in the biggest moments. You don't get everything you need out of him. It's just baffling because the guy is the second best skilled big man in the league. Behind Joel Embiid, he's the second best skilled big man in the league. Anthony Davis might be better than him, but when it comes to skills, Cat has that. But he has the fucking IQ of a slug when it comes to basketball and, and doing things the right way. The man get the worst. He played 29 minutes the other night. Why can't he stay on the court longer than that, man? He finds ways to get the most craziest fouls in the game in the situations where you need him. You need him to be a star. You need him to step up and be that guy. But for the sake of me, this man keeps getting in foul trouble, and then he's been shooting the ball horrendous. He's been getting up 15 shots, 1,500 shots, every day and maybe that's a problem maybe he should be taking less shots before practice and maybe he'll have his legs for the game because 1500 shots a day you know how much you know how much time that is to get 1500 shots up for for practice it's impossible that's impo it's not impossible but it's unlikely it would take you like six hours yes and nobody's, and nobody's doing that and maybe that's a problem. Maybe he need to be working on other parts of the game because he could get to the hole. Damn near will. Everybody falls for that slow-ass pump fake. He does it when he wants to. He gets to the basket. He might run you over a couple of times, get a couple of charges, but as long as he stay away from the other dumb fouls he gets, he'll be beneficial, beneficial to that team, man, and he'll just be an impact player that they need. 
Um, I know Rudy's gonna go on about Rudy Gobert plus minus. He's affecting the game. I can't even I can't even deny it, deny it. As much as Draymond and TNT is talking crap about him and shitting on him, I look at it his plus minus being a positive for the most part. So somehow when he's on the court, they're doing better. So do they have to keep him on the court? I don't know because it seems like they're taking advantage of the pick and roll situation with him. They're lobs everywhere. But when you look at his plus minus, he's affecting the game, obviously in a good way because from last series on to this series, it's been in the positive. And I can't even go back against Rudy against that. He keeps telling me, I'm like, no, nah, but look at look what you see with your eyes. But at the end of the day, he's 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 being a positive person on the court. He's he's impacting the game in a way that we don't see it, but on the numbers to say that he's doing good. But the biggest factor right now that they're that they're losing is cat. Anthony Edwards, we said the face of the league. Um, we're gonna pump our brakes on this just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, he's going through a little bit of growing pains, man. The times when they need him to step up in the big moments, he's passing the ball. He's, he's saying that he's tired. All those things. Um, give credit to the Mavericks. They're playing a hell of a series. Their big men are are being more impactful on the defensive end than Denver big men could be. Joker's not known to be a shot blocker or intimidated at the rim, but they have Gafford and they have um, Lively, who's around the rim. They're impacting the game by sh- um, being in Anthony Edwards' way. So once he gets past whoever's guarding him, Derek Jones mainly, he's running into a couple other defenders. And that's what's going on in this series, and that's why they're down 3-1 right now. But, hey, I still think they're going six. You good? No, I'll keep it short. I just want you to tune in, and then I'll come back. I'll come back what you're saying. You want to know what the comedy of what you just said is to me? Well, is that go, this, this, this morning when I was watching first tape, mm-hmm. you want to know what was said yeah, on Rudy, that broadcast? Rudy Gobert. Nothing about Rudy. No, not, nothing about, oh, well, that, yeah. They, they're saying that literally every game, every post game, every pregame. I am convinced that these guys who claim to be basketball experts and former players don't know shit about basketball and they don't know shit about data. I am not an analytics person. I hate analytics overall, especially in baseball. And I hate it in basketball because now all we get is 53s a game. But the comedy was Brian Windhorst mentions Derek Lively. And says when Derek Lively's on the court, the Dallas Mavericks are plus twenty-two in plus minus. So while you can discredit and denounce the stat, it's a stat based on win. when you're on the court. So when your team is on the court, is the team winning? And Rudy Gobert has the best plus minus on the team over the last two series when he's on the court their defense automatically drops when he's not on the court. The basket is unguarded. And yes, does he have deficiencies? Absolutely. But the shit that he gets because he's an easy punching bag, because he's French and, you know, whatever he he comes across as maybe soft. Of course, he got ripped for going to his child's birth, which is mind-blowing to me. But when he's on the court, they're typically doing better. Now, is he the reason for them winning or losing? No. Carl Anthony Towns has to play like a star. He you, was a tr- he was you, atrocious the first three games. Do you agree with me that he's the second best big skill wise in the I league? I think he's the most skilled big guy in the NBA. Over oh, Embiid, Jokic, I guess Jokic. Embiid, I said Embiid. I think he's worth more skills than Embiid. Wow. I mean, he's right there. They're neck and neck. Yeah, Carl Anthony Towns is an incredibly skilled oh player, gosh. and he took thirty. He took thirty-three threes in the first three games, mm-hmm. and he couldn't make any. And the difference was in the last game, he hit four in the in the fourth quarter, in a row, <laughs> which was still in a row, and which was still they weren't even the greatest shots. But he, but the, what, but he, what he made changed? It. But what changed though? He attacked the it, rim early. It, it, you know, oh, we drew a charge foul where it's like, dude, you like, what are you doing? I watch Carl Anthony Towns, and he he gives you like he gives you uh, acid reflux, agita. He messes your stomach up because you watch a guy that's got so much skill, and has a guy who's six foot six guarding him, and he's standing twenty seven feet from the basket. What are you doing? But when he want to yes. go, he goes. When yeah, you you hit the four threes in the fourth quarter, 
of the last game, fabulous. But the next game, he won't make them. He needs to take his ass into the block. And that's where they'll blame Rudy Gobert and say, oh, because Gobert's down there, uh, it, it creates traffic. No, that's not. It's 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 Carl Anthony Towns' personality. He's soft. He's always been soft. And that's why Jimmy Butler hated him, because he's soft and he's always been soft. He cries. He cries on a level that Luka Doncic cries. He cries about every call. Every call. He It's always, oh, 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 oh. He does it every time. You know, um, Anthony Edwards for three games looked terrible. He looked terrible also. So it doesn't matter what Rudy, Rudy Gobert's plus minus is if the two best players are shit for three games. And the fact that Anthony Edwards is 22 years old and by the middle of the fucking first game he looked exhausted is mind-blowing. I know you've told me, you know, he's young. It doesn't matter if he's young. People get tired. Dude. You're 22. You should not be exhausted in the first half of the of the first game. Uh, like, there's a problem. Adrenal- and both, and- Adrenaline. <clears throat> these Chasing, guys, though, Chasing these, Kyrie. these guys have lost two games by a possession. And game three, they should have won that game, too. They were winning that game, then gave it away in the last two minutes. They, I think that the stat was for the first three games, they scored 11 points in the last three minutes of the games combined, and they had 10 points in the last three minutes of game four. They couldn't score in the last three minutes. And it's a, and, and a lot of times I'm watching Anthony Edwards just randomly do weird stuff, not attack, kick it to the wrong guy, take bad shots. Nothing that resembles an offense that they ran for 45 minutes because they've been leading they were, or they were in every game in the last two minutes of the game. I mean, it, 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 I mean, I guess it could be worse. It could be Indiana, who led <laughs> three games with under 15 seconds to go, three times and lost all three games. But you have a guy. You have they seem to go into some brain dead mode in the last two minutes, which they finally didn't. Yeah, you had to make some shots <clears throat> and hit that wing jumper. Um, even though, I mean, at the end of the day, I still think the officials were almost trying to advance the Mavericks. So they have equal rest with the Celtics. Stop I, it. I, look, I, I say stuff about rigged. I don't believe the games are rigged. I think the referees are on the take. Um, I think there's plenty of referees that are betting. That's a bad call that can I, happen. I, 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 I get tired of watching bad calls happen to the same team it over and over. I, we we Nick, argue about the Celtics. It wasn't Nick, a bad call. It was a Nick, foul. It was Nick, a foul. Nick, 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 number one in game two, Kyrie Irving flat out slapped the crap out of Jaden McDaniel's arm, and the referee is looking at him. Look at the replay. He's staring at it. And he doesn't call it. And then they run a replay and so, they give the ball to the Mavericks. And the Mavericks win the game because of that call. I don't blame it wasn't, one it call wasn't because of that call. It was because of that it, call, it, Nick. It helped. It you helped. Get two, they had a two point lead. You it get helped. two free throws. You was, make your free throws. The game is over. It still was. The game is over. It was still 40 there was seconds 15 left. seconds left, Nick. At that moment, there was 15 seconds left? There was 15 seconds left, Nick. No way. Luke made three with us with three seconds left. He made the three with three. So they dribbled the ball out. 30 seconds. Whatever. It, they would be up four. So sitting here and acting like that call didn't have a major impact on the game. It's bullshit. Well, you said you said that Anthony Edwards fouled Luca. He did not. He, he didn't touch him on the, He did he not touch him twice. on his body. I watched four different angles. I watched he did too. not touch him. No, he you went, didn't. You said he fouled him on his arm. No, he never not, touched his I arm. Said he went across his body first. He and yeah. then, and he then, never touched and his then, body. And then he grabbed. He and never, then, Nick, and then, you said he fouled him on the body. He I, never touched his body. He went across his body first. Then Luca he went. He never into, touched his body. And then, video. He never yes, touched he, his body. Yes, he did. And no, then, he, Luke, and then Luca touched his body. And then Luca went to, into a shooting oh, motion. And then he got him. And that was literally at, fucking at, his legs like, like this. At, at the end of the day, get out of here, man. Get out of here. You're wrong. At the end you're of the wrong. day, at every the, board I've read says you're wrong. At, at the end of the day, it didn't matter. Did it matter, Rudy? Did it, it matter. matter? How did it, it matter? matter? Did he make the free? He it made the shot. He made the shot. He, the game. How? It almost cost him the game. How? It almost cost him the game. Five point game. I'm sorry. A six point game turns into a three point game. Potentially a two point game on a bullshit call. They still had to follow him at the end. They come. Made it, they made the free throws. They made the free throws over. Play. Over and over. They make the Luke, free over. Are you a right-handed shooter? Yes. Are you right-handed? Yes. You yes. are. Yes. Does your left leg ever go 
fucking forward because like he's he, doing a karate he, kick? No, he came across his body and he didn't come across his yes, body. He did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I'm not he lying. I'm him. telling you what I've seen. What am I, fucking blind. I, 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 I have a 2020. I have a 2020. 2020. No, and obviously you can't see for shit. I can see I, for shit. I still shot it for you, and what you the, still said he touched him. And he did. He didn't touch him. He went across his body at what? first. He That's went him. across his body. What Look. across? Where did he touch him? Across his body when he where? reached across his body over the screen. Where? His, 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 his hip? Yeah. His belly? Yes, his, it's a foul. Foul. Hair? It's a foul. Call that. They called a foul. And it's, it. it's a foul. The foul up here as the ball was released. So, so, and they hands. so, because yes, it is a foul. First of all, because he couldn't follow through. He hit him that way. We talking about? He's gonna be ready to win here. What are you talking about? That's a foul. 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 First of all, and then it didn't the game. It didn't the game anyway. So, so, so that's what I'm talking about. It don't make no fucking sense anyway. It didn't the game. He still missed the fuck. He missed the he missed the free throw. He missed the free throw. He made the shot. Okay, so the, the, the three points he was going to get, he's out of your mind. He's a one position game. He's 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 You're right. You're never mind. Just, like, just, like, just like the rule they made where they said you can't pump fake. A guy lands. He lands. That's Carl Anthony Towns. And he fouled out. And I saw a thousand posts saying that is the exact rule the NBA created for James Harden. And, 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 and rewarding bullshit. He did not foul him. He jumped into him. No, he lounged. He, he lounged. He lunged up. What are you talking about? He lunged. He lunged up. What are you talking about? Call Anthony Towns. Yes, it's a foul. It's a foul. It's a super foul like that. Anyway, it's a fucking jump foul. What is he doing? 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 You don't know the rules. What is he doing? But you don't know the rules. What are you talking about? That's a foul. Same play. Rudy, it's, it's a foul. Down. It's a foul. Anytime you love a team, you you you, you ride and die for them. No matter. Man, motherfucker. You be closer. You be came. You be came. Yes, you do. You care about. You care about the Timberwolves now. You have to play my fan. You care. You care. You care. You care. You want to know why I'll win? Boston. I, I already said, because I hate the fucking Lakers. I already said Boston's gonna win the the, the championship. Don't what you said, you'll never bet on it. Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> Rudy. Okay. Pardon me for my dumbass son. Rudy, where's that? Dropping shit. <laughs> Do I think the Timberwolves can come back and win this series? Yes. Do I think they'll come back and win this series? Yes. Oh, that's what you're going on the live on? Yes. You're going on the live? I yeah. picked them to win the series. They're going to win the fucking series, yeah. in you're my good. opinion. You're Can they bet. win it? Yeah. I'm waiting for Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards to play well. I'm tired of hearing them make excuses for Kyrie and come up with bullshit like, oh, if Anthony Edwards had not said what he said, Kyrie wouldn't have tried hard. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you're telling me the pro athlete would have said, I'm not going to play hard unless Anthony Edwards says he's going to defend me. That is the corniest garbage that I hear these fucking guys say. You're motivating him. No, the fuck he's, he's not. not motivating him. He's motiv I'm he's making fifty million dollars a year, forty million, whatever he's making. He's plenty motivated. He wants to win a championship. This bullshit about how oh you motivated him. No, 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 the no. fuck he didn't. I don't. I don't he's, believe it. He's calling him out. He wants to defend him. Big fucking deal. <laughs> and don't sit here because you know what? Did he not motivate him last game? Was he not motivated? Is that why he played like trash? No. He because the reality and, was Kyrie scored like under 26 times, five what, times so, in so, the six game series uh, with the Gold Casey Thunder. That's what I'm that's what I was about to get to, man. They are making this big old deal like Kyrie, Kyrie, no, Kyrie, 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 he's changed and this he's he's I say y'all were not saying this last series where Kyrie was scoring nine points, nine Please. points, twelve Please. points put in the in the series. Now all of a sudden it's Oh, Kyrie's the this and that, 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 and and everybody's all in love with Kyrie what, all what over again. One? What happened in game one that they went crazy? He had twenty four and a half, and then he finished with he finished with thirty. Yeah. Yeah. So he wasn't motivated in the second half. He wasn't motivated in the second half. You know that is the retard bullshit that comes out of Draymond's mouth. Charles Barkley, Shaq, Kenny Smith, all these fucking idiots. Stephen A. Smith, all these idiots who make up shit just to, for sound bites. He was motivated. Get out of here, man. So Charles Barkley, 
you were never motivated to win an NBA championship, you fucking idiot. And I love Charles Barkley, but he says some of the dumbest shit ever, except for the shit about the WNBA, which was brilliant. <laughs> Other than that, he says dumbass shit. And you're sitting here saying, you motiv- he motivated Kyrie Irving? Come on, man. Come on, man. No, when somebody, like that, 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 that's when, just nonsense. No matter what, man. When somebody's at your position shit. who's young They're and, winning. Com- and competitive, I hate when, when every time somebody says something and somebody win or lose, they be like, oh, it's because of this or that. that, oh, that, oh, that, or, or, that or they thank God because God only wanted one team to win. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Like, I'm so sick of it because uh, you know what? At the end of the day, end of the day, if Minnesota, if Minnesota's two best players average 30, they're going to win the series. They're going to win. In seven. If they average 30. They will win the series because they're going to go home and win. And the key is coming back and getting back, get, 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 winning one more game in Dallas. And clearly home court doesn't mean dick. I'm about to say that. That, that don't, don't mean, mean shit. Dick. You're, you're, you're telling me they win at home. That It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter anymore. It's, think, it's already been proven that they, that both teams could win on the fucking road. But it's I been think, proven think, the whole time in this whole playoff. Anybody think, can go out there and win. But I think they'll go back home and win. Yes. And I think Dallas will sit on their laurels and hope that they can win, could protect home court. But that don't mean shit. Because if Ant goes for 40 and Carl Anthony goes, go down, goes for 30 in Dallas, this one's going to win. Carl Anthony Town has to do it in 20 fucking minutes, though, because that's the only time, the amount of time he can play before he files the fuck out. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, he, he, I don't know. He acts like Squidward on well, the court sometimes. No, I mean, sometimes clearly, he's a little I mean, slow. He went, I don't to, know. He, he went to Kentucky, man. They're not I don't exactly know. He's, the smartest he's, guys. He's, he's, he's a little bit... Uh, he's slow. A little bit. You can, he's slow. Uh, he moves around. Yeah. He's slow. He, he went he, to Kentucky. Yes. Yeah, the guys in Kentucky are all dumb. Yes. I want, some They're of his, all dumb. Some they his, all sound slow. Some of his marbles aren't. Yes, there. I think all those guys. I, I look at I mean, who the hell wants to walk around with a fucking unibrow that connects from here to here and sit here and thinks it looks good? So he's <laughs> kind of slow too, Anthony Davis. <laughs> like you get picked on with that shit if you were in high school. You can't pick on me when I'm making forty million, baby. Well, clearly, yes. you even look you you even look handsome to some women too. Yeah, for sure. All right, before 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 we get a uh, we get uh, canceled by the association. And, oh, and why would I get canceled, interviews. man? Stop being so sensitive. God damn. Uh, you need to stop <laughs> saying that. Like it's, it, it's saying what? Really, stop calling me sensitive. It's becoming disrespectful at a point. Like, you're sensitive, not. It's you okay. Say anything to you, you say you're sensitive. Like. No, motherfucker. Because why are we getting canceled? I watch fucking Whitlock and I watch fucking Gilbert Arena say way worse shit. I don't have to agree with you and be sensitive. I just don't agree with you. Like that's it. You just said we get canceled by the association. That's what I'm talking about. It's my viewpoint. All right, and Gilbert Arena should be canceled too because he says way worse shit than I've ever said. Like stop that. Anyway, (laughs) as we uh get to the next topic, uh, Nick, earlier you stated uh Caitlin Clark. You feel that um, she's getting a raw deal? Do we think that the WNBA set her up for failure? Is that what we're thinking at this point? What so, thoughts? so I don't think that they set her up for failure. It happened to look that way, but they wanted to mer- they wanted to market their best merchandise product in the in the league. They wanted to put out put it out there as much as possible. I don't blame them for that. She's the hot commodity. She's bringing in the hot blood. Everybody wants to see it. You got to ride the wave while it's hot. The shit's hot as hell right now. You got to ride it. You got to put it out there as much as possible, as much as possible. Get in front of the TV. Get in front of the fans. And you want to do it as quick as possible. And you're trying to hope that she keeps the fans intrigued and keep them coming back. So that's why they got her playing. So she, they played eight games already. Nobody else played over six games. The Las Vegas Aces only played four games at this point. It's only been 15 days into the season. They already played 11 damn games or something like or or seven damn games. It's, it's been a lot. Whatever it is, it's been more than everybody else. Well, eight games. My bad. Eight games, right, Rudy? Um, the pay, fever. Yeah, eight games. They played. The, they, played they played eight games in like twelve or thirteen days. Whatever it is, they shouldn't be playing that much. But you have to. You have to push it. You have to fucking push it as much as possible and as fast as you can. You have to, man. It's, it's going on right now. She plays Angel Reese in a couple of days. You gotta keep marketing her, man. She's what she's she's bringing everybody. She's bringing Rudy eyes. She's bringing Donald eyes. She's bringing Nick eyes. She's bringing the whole world eyes. The male eyes, even though they don't want the males out, the male eyes to watch the, their sport and to support them. She's bringing that. And if we stop, then they ain't gonna have nothing. They kind of need us, but that's neither here nor there. Even though it's here, um, they need us, man. They need us. They need us bad. 
and they have to put it out there, man. She's what we're watching, man. Like we, I said before, she is the female version of Steph Curry. That's what we want to see. We want to see the threes. We want to see her get shots. We want her to shoot 20 times a game. I don't know what the hell this eight time a game bullshit that's going on. Seven times a game, eight, nine. She's the motherfucking product that we all here to see. Shoot the fucking ball 25 times, 30 times. I don't care. Average 28 points, 30 points. She's good enough to do it. She just came back with a 30-point game. She's a fucking baller. We want to see her. Did, it, did the league set her up for, for failure? She should get some rest. But damn it, we got to push her. And they only got like nine, ten teams in the league anyway, man. So she's going to be playing against the best teams. You can't avoid playing the best teams. Unless, who, who are we going to have her play to start the season? The Atlanta fucking fever. I mean, the Atlanta fucking whatever they call <laughs> the Atlanta fever. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> like, there's only so many bad teams in the league, man. You got the you got Connecticut, you got you got New York, you got uh you got uh Las Vegas, you got Phoenix is solid, um Seattle solid. It's, it's, there's no running, there's no dodging them. Everybody's pretty much for WNBA standards are very good players. So it's it's gonna be very fucking the the parody the parody of the league. The, Did you what? say they're all very good players? Oh, you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm saying in regards to everybody that's in the league, I'm not saying, I mean, everybody can't be trash. Somebody has to be good. Even if, even if everybody's bad, somebody's There's good. There's tremendo mierda in that league, even, bro. Even if They're everybody, bad. Even if everybody, even, even, bad. even if everybody's bad, somebody's good out of the bad. Yes, so, there's somebody, some, a few some, good ones, but most of them are bad. Somebody has to be the best player of the bad. They so, cut first round picks in this league because they're all bad. No, they cut first round picks because they don't have that much players. It's, it's limited. It's, it's very. You know, very only, you know, there's only twelve players left of the draft from the thirty six that were drafted. Yeah, it's very limited, man. And but did and, you know that? Yeah, it's 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 a tight ship that runs over there, man. If you're not good enough to play, like you're not gonna be there, like so you have to come and bring whatever you're bringing to that team. You have to bring it right I now. I don't think it all is that, but okay. What it is then? Go ahead, please. Tell I think me. You, I think you have a bunch of old heads that are trying to keep these young kids down. I old think you have a bunch of, a bunch of old ass players who should be out of the league. Who are helping keep these young players? Are they, cut, are, are they cutting them? They're not even giving them a chance. Why are you drafting them? They're not even getting a chance. You're telling me a girl who have, who was like the third leading scorer in the history of college basketball can't score? Can't score? She can't make. Can't that play? Team. She can't play? No, she made the team. And she can't she made the team. They cut her. Deja Fair. Yeah, I know. They cut her two days ago. They cut her five, four games in. Mm -hmm. So all of so who'd you sign? Who'd you know. bring in? I don't know. That's the thing. We don't know. Monica. So we're gonna get we're gonna get rid of a twenty seven point per game score in college last year. In what college, in college. Are you telling me your girl, your girl can't score? Like you, it, it, this is the problem. I'm sorry, you, you, I cut you off. Continue. No, 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 go, no. I was listening to you. I'm just saying, Jimmy Fredette. The problem, there's problem, people like that. Well, Jimmy Fredette was six foot tall and white, and he couldn't. And he's again, you got to be a six foot is special it, is person. It, is it fair like five five or some shit? She's like five six, but she's but. There's plenty of five, six women and five, seven women in that league. <clears throat> right now, by the end of the weekend, the Indiana Fever will have played 11 games in 20 days. 11 games in 20 days, and five of them, I'm sorry, six of them will be on the road. Six. So they played eight games. They got three more. They, got, they play Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Imagine if an NBA team played Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. There would be a fucking riot. There'd be a strike. They would go crying about how tired they are in their charter jets. It, and 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 no, no it and happens on road trips. It happens. It does not happen three and four anymore. They don't do it. They don't do it. It they don't do it. They've played eleven times by Sunday. They'll play eleven times in twenty days. While you have teams that have played five times. The Las Vegas Aces have five games. The Fever played eight times in that what, same stretch. The Aces, Four of the, the Aces by, played today? By, the Aces played by, by, next, by Sunday. The Aces will have played six times with four games at home. So I understand what the WNBA, WNBA wants to do. Yeah. What they're doing is destroying their best asset because she's getting absolutely fucking killed out there. She's getting fouled. I mean, she's getting hit every time she touches the ball. As she should. 
I'm just saying. What do you mean from, that she should? As from I'm a com- watching. From I'm a watching. competitive. St- I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just. There was one, a girl. Did you watch second. the game yesterday? One, one second. One second. From a competitive standpoint, when somebody shoots the ball as well as she does, and is a threat as soon as she crosses half court, what are you Steph known to is, do? Steph is a threat. No one's guarding him at half court. Yes, they in hell they are. What are you talking about? Especially when no, it gets to, when it no, gets to the playoff time. In, in, in the fourth game of the season, Nick. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying when it gets in to the, the third game of the season. They're guarding gets, him at half court. No, they're gets, not. When it gets to playoff time. Yeah, and you know what he's doing in the playoffs? He's running off 400 screens. So you that's the first part. So that's the first part. Can I finish? Okay, okay. Can I finish? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you know what's happening with Indiana? They got this girl dribbling the ball on the floor, dishing it, passing it, doing what she got to do, and they run her off no screens. They don't call out screens when she's about to get creamed from the front and the side. I've watched the games where her own teammates are letting her get crushed. Kind of like what the Spurs allowed to happen to Wemby in the first month of the season. Where they weren't, where he'd be wide open for a dunk to win the game and the fucking teammate throws up a bullshit shot and they lose. This girl right now is taking like 14 shots a game. She had 30 yesterday. Yes, does she still have a turnover issue? Sure. And I can show you a video of 10 of those turnovers that were fumbled away by her teammates that she gets credited for. Does she still need to work on that? Yes, absolutely. Every time Kelsey Mitchell's on the floor with her, it's a negative because Kelsey Mitchell's a bricklayer. She, she's 5'7", by the way. I, I think, she, she's I, a bricklayer. Every time the girl's on the floor, she, she's 5 for 15. Why does she get 15 shots while Caitlin Clark's taking 15 shots? But you've but you put a situation where a woman who literally just got out of college a month ago, month and a half ago now, is playing every other day in a WNBA. Now that's- Not only that, she's played Connecticut twice, New York twice, and Las Vegas. And by Sunday, she'll have played New York three times. So, so six of the 11 games are against the three best teams in the league. So What kind of insane scheduling is that? If you're trying to build up this woman, your feature attraction, who uh, tonight draws 18,000, tomorrow they play somebody else draws 18,000. Rudy, Rudy. But the team she just played draws six the next day because she's not there. Rudy, do you think... You're destroying you, her. Do you think that that we that we and, and WNBA thought that she was going to be so good that she can handle... Going against anybody that came up that, that came upon her, like you can't. But dude, she, she went to the worst team in the league. No, no, I get that. I, I did you expect that. her to carry the fucking worst team in the league and go? I don't know, thirty five and seven. Fuck no, 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 not that. But we thought we thought it would be a little bit better no, than one and seven. One and seven. We thought her, thought they, we thought I we should make Aaliyah Boston life a lot better. First of all, first of all, I didn't know they were playing the best teams in the league. Yeah, every other night <laughs> to start the season. I didn't know that. So what, what would you do? What would you, you do? Told, if, you would you told me that, if you had told me they were playing Connecticut, New York, New York, Connecticut, the first four, I'd tell you they were 0-4. So what, yeah. would you, what, what would you do? Would you would you schedule them against the Atlanta? What's, it, what's the Atlanta? Fever? Yeah, like, dude, they, okay, they played the Sparks twice, and they beat the Sparks once, and they lost the next game. I mean, they played Seattle. They, they, play. lost, by, they lost by, okay, listen. They can't play them the whole time. But, but listen, listen. They lost by four to Connecticut. They yeah. lost by two to Seattle. They lost by they lost by six last night. They've been they in lost. the game. They've been all they've been in all those games for the most part, except for that. You know what the problem is? Her teammates suck. Her teammates suck. They're not good. They're not good, and she's not shooting enough because her coach is fucking awful. I'm telling you right now, the new coach will be Lisa Bluter from Iowa next oh, year. Whoa, that's There's big, no way that's... the Indiana coach is there next year because that woman actually she called Caitlin Clark out yesterday. Says you can't be talking to the referees. Can, can you imagine if? Fucking Steve Kerr said that shit about Draymond Green and him and his mouth. And if Steph Curry ever said Draymond Green should shut the fuck up. Oh my God. Oh, by the way, Natasha Cloud, you need to shut the fuck up, you fucking idiot. Stupid ass from the fucking Phoenix Mercury telling men to shut the fuck up and not watch the game and learn history. You don't know dick about basketball, clearly. Because men, more (laughs) often than not, no more history about your game than you do because I actually been alive longer than you have. And I've been watching the WNBA, especially early on. I watched a whole lot of it. But I do think that Caitlin Clark is getting – she's getting fouled on levels at certain points that – I just watched Angel Reese draw a foul that got a girl ejected, which I don't think she should have been ejected. Um, it was a flagrant foul. I mean, they kicked the girl out of the game. Those girls were teammates in college. 
I believe, Alyssa Thomas, because they both went to Maryland. Or maybe she knew her from Maryland. I'm not sure. But I can tell you this. Caitlin Clark took a fucking forearm across the face by the Las Vegas Aces on a block shot that the girl then came down and took her fucking boom right in her face. And if that was a, an NBA game, that's a flagrant foul. In this game, it was a common foul. So I think there are certain fouls that people are taking liberties with. And I think they're doing it to all the young players because you have a petty bunch of bitter ass old broads who don't want these young women to survive, to, to succeed. They don't well, want them to succeed. Well, you don't think that they're just being competitive? No. Nah. They're not that Damn. competitive against they're not that competitive against each other. Are you what? watching? Yeah, I'm watching. watching. I'm watching. Yeah. Are you watch but, are you watching the other but, games that Rudy, don't include them? Rudy. Ru- no, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. But Rudy, that's what everybody does. You don't just let the newcomers come in and, and do it no. and, and hopscotch around and it's do a, the but, it's, but, but no, you I'm, get I'm, called. I'm, I'm keeping it real. You it's don't, a flagrant or flagrant, no, no matter, matter who it is. No matter who you are, you don't let these... It's a flagrant or flagrant, no matter is, who it, it is. is. It is, yes. it is. But you don't let yes. newcomers come in the league and just take over and do what the fuck they want to do. You don't. You do. Did you ever hear people say that shit in an NBA? We're not going to let that guy do it? No. They, no, you they, didn't. They, they don't... First of all, who was fouling LeBron's six foot eight, 250-pound ass as a fucking rookie? Yeah, because he was 6'8", 250 oh, pounds. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Caitlin's okay. Not, Caitlin's not that. She's not a, a girl who found her smaller than her. She's not. I'm a just saying, like the, 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 you know what? You want to know when's gonna stop? You know, you want to know when it'll stop? When Caitlin Clark gets up off the ground and punches one of these bras in the mouth, she's that's when it. it'll stop. She's and she won't do it. it. And she won't do it. Or when one of her teammates <laughs> pulls a Draymond Green, because her teammates are part Ooh. of the problem. Which Draymond Green? The choke the him out. The, the, the stump the, him. Either, Either one, them, any, any, any of the them, the kick them, any of them. Um, I don't. Any, the punch, any of them. I don't know. Oh, any all Draymond. Okay, all Draymond. Any okay. one of them. Any any one of the any Draymond. Any one of them. You, you anyone. Act, nut nut. I mean, the nut shot won't this. work. Okay. And maybe, the nut maybe, shot won't work because maybe, I mean, you don't have nuts. But but a but a foot a foot a chest stomp or <laughs> or a punch. A, a attack a punch. Uh, a check. So go. <laughs> I, I mean, that I want. There was a you said. Did you send me the video? Uh, you sent me the video uh, of the yeah. girl who's talking about the two girls that used to date. <laughs> you sent me that, right? Yes, I sent you that. Two girls that used to date on opposite teams. One of them with the fever, one of them with the Suns, Connecticut Sun. And what happens? One girl from the other team fouls the other. They don't date anymore, but Erica Wheeler for the fever trying to do something, and the other ex-girlfriend pulls her away. What? Oh, you're gonna to touch my ex girlfriend? Like what? Like what is going on? It is a reality TV show. So that's what I told y'all to do, man. I said have the show hard. Okay, hard knockers. We're gonna have the show, and it's gonna be reality TV. It's gonna get behind the scenes, and this is what people want to see. I told y'all that before. Oh, everybody looked at me and said, "Nick, oh, you're crazy." No, I told y'all this is what gets people going nowadays. Everybody loves reality TV. Put the camera back there. Now we got the little things that's going on. And the women are going to be like, oh, that's disrespectful. Oh, it's not disrespectful when y'all are watching Love and Hip Hop for the 90th time or we're watching Love is Blind for the 300th time. No, but when it comes to the WNBA, it's just a problem. But no, it's a fucking smart idea because that's going to get the women involved and intrigued in the league because that's what gets them fucking going. They love that shit. Don't, don't, y'all ain't going to tell me and lie to Nick Taylor and tell me, oh, this is not what y'all love. No, y'all love that. It's all over social media. It's post, posted on Ballers Alert. Y'all all in everybody's business. That's what y'all want. That's what the, To get the women to join this game and love it and really pay attention, you're going to have some type of reality TV. It might not have to get all the details like, like that situation right there where it's so lovey-dovey and ex quarrels and we're lovers on, but haters, but lovers on the court, but not lovers. I don't know what's going on, but that's what's going to get women into this thing. Basketball, men, we want to see Caitlin Clark. We want to see ability and actions like Caitlin Clark. Somebody coming down the court, shooting the ball the way she does, putting it between her legs, breaking ankles, pushing off. We want to see that as men. That's that's what because we can't see dunking. So the next best thing is shooting ability and shooting it from distance. We love that. But on the women's side, to get them involved, it's gonna have to be reality TV. I'm sorry, that's just what it's gonna be. I I do think that in order for Indiana to become a better team, they have to let this woman shoot 20 times a game. Like, she has to shoot 20 times a game. You know what? Because that's going to open up everything else. It's going to open up 
it wanted to open up more free throws for her because last game she shot 15 free throws because she was attacking the basket the whole damn game. But it's an open up free throws. It's an open up many more passes for teammates. Pick and it's roll. It's going to create so much way. more. Because right now, a number of her shots, she's forcing. She's forcing. Like she took a shot or two shots against um, the Sparks yesterday where she was like a few steps in front of half court. Like just heaving it up, hoping. You know, and the comedy is when you watch your teammates catch the ball, literally toe on the line, they shoot an air ball. I mean, an air ball three from the toe on the line. And people are asking why people watch Caitlin Clark because she don't need her toe on the line. She doesn't have to have her toe on the line to shoot a three. Whereas most of these teammates can't shoot beyond 22 feet. They can't. They just don't make the shots. They, they, they don't have to, whatever it is, they don't make the shots. And it just gets, you have to run actions for her. You have to have her running off screens. Down screen, constantly. pin down. Constantly. All because those right things now, for double ball everything, screen. everything she does, she's creating herself. They're not creating any offense for her. She's dribble handoffs, go to the basket, or take a, a, a tough contested three. They are guarding the shit out of her at the three-point line. They absolutely are. It's very rare she's at an open look. But at the end of the day, like, you want her to be good? They play 11 games in 20 days where no one else comes close to that. In the next 10 days after that, they play four games. And they're, and they're, and they're playing, and again, they're playing Connecticut again. And they're, I mean, they're playing the three best teams in the league a million times. So I, that's do I think, huh? That's the East Coast, though. I mean, they're going to play the East Coast teams more than anybody. I don't even know what the scheduling rule is in the WNBA. I mean, I, I, I mean, of course, not they're not even, traveling I'm, all the way to the West as much as they're going to do East Coast. I'm just, I'm just assuming. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty and sure. I just don't wanna, and I just don't want to hear Caitlin Clark being shit on because she commits turnovers. She needs to clean it up, but she's the reality is she's, she's literally the one that has the ball in her hand literally 35 minutes a game. She's a and, rookie who just graduated. What the players, what I'm saying is the players that commit the most turnovers have the ball. LeBron James has the most turnovers she, in NBA history. She has to get it down to about By three. a lot. She has to get it down to 3.5 to 4, though. The way she yeah, handles the ball. That's I, fine. Five, five is too much. I, I'm not saying it's not, but this, this, this overreaction to turnovers. She, it, they lost yesterday, and the Sparks committed seven more turnovers than they did. And she had third, like the the line earlier this week where they won, and people said, "Oh, she played inefficiently." Well, if Angel Reese has ten rebounds, eight assists, I'm sorry, ten rebounds, eight assists, four, four steals, and a block, they'll say that Angel Reese played a great game. But when it's her, because she only had eleven points, she only took nine shots. She played like shit to people. It's, it's stupid. It's just stupid to me. But then she has thirty, and they'll say, "Oh, she committed six turnovers." Like, they're going to pick things to, to pick at. Jamel Hill recently said that the reason that people even like her is because she's straight. She's not even cute. Like, stop. <laughs> like, she's not Cam Brink. She's not Rakia uh, Mitchell. What is the girl from the Sparks? Who was the model-looking girl from uh, from Tennessee. Like, Rakia. Like, like, Rakia Mitchell or Williams, I think it is. I think Rakia. that's her name. I think. Go look at the girl from L.A. Sparks. <clears throat> um, but, I mean, yeah, I think they need uh, – I think the WNBA has done a disservice because it's not giving this team enough time to actually get better. Because if you're playing every other day, you're not going to get better. You have no chance to get better because they only have a two-game preseason. But that's all I got. I think we're going to keep it on basketball for right now. Um Boston Celtics have advanced to the NBA Finals. want it to show on record that they were my pick to win it all this year. Jason Tatum, the fans know my affinity for Jason Tatum, as well as I'm a huge fan of Porzingis. I'd love to see Knicks fans get it wrong, and they got it so wrong with him. They let him go. So I'd love to see them stew. Shout out to our brother Boozer, brother of the show. Uh, there was a horrible take on the Get Up show. Um, I believe it was today or yesterday. Well, they made a whole big fuss about Jason Tatum not being a fan of Jalen Brown winning the MVP trophy. And for me, when I, I was actually in a meeting I saw it, I was like, oh man, that must be a dry day at ESPN offices. Like, they're just pulling strings. And only to see Sports Illustrated picked up on it and they wrote a whole expose about how it was such a horrible take. Um, creating narratives, I don't think reporters know it, it fucks up locker rooms. 
a lot of issues that some athletes have had and you know athletes have talked about it now whether the kevin garnett's or you know paul pierce's of the world different guys who have uh shows have talked about like a lot of animosity towards their internal dealings have come from outside sources creating narratives and i just thought that was a horrible take because they've been trying to put a wedge between these guys forever don't understand why as a person that the last time we saw a really good twosome win it like a real good just twosome win it was kobe and Shaq. westbrook and kd didn't do it you name anyone else after that they didn't do it if you want to add Kyrie and lebron it was really a big three they had kevin love so why wouldn't we want to see this young twosome do it? It's such a weird thing. that The media has a love-hate um, relationship with these guys. So as a fan of basketball, I want to see them win it all. Jason Tatum, huge fan. Jalen Brown. I, I, I'm i going to tell you to your face, if you ever watch this, I proclaimed for years that you couldn't dribble. Nick might say that as well. That I no, said no, 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 no. I didn't say You're going to say that I said that about him. That he couldn't dribble. No. Oh, 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 I thought you were saying that. I said that. he can't I dribble. Who, 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 can't, who can't dribble? Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown? Yeah. yeah. He, he can't I, dribble. I didn't think, I, he can't dribble, dribble enough. I didn't think so. But I always thought he was an amazing all-around player. And it's great to see him, you know, pull it through. And um, shout out to Drew Holiday. I've always been a fan of his. Huge fan of his since the beginning. Um, So, yeah. What are you guys' thoughts? Before we wrap it up, I'm sure I think we have a, a lot to get on this one. But Eastern Conference Finals, Boston Celtics are there. Who do we think they play against? And what are your thoughts about them being in there? Do you think they win it all this year? They finally get over that hump this year. Hey, man, you play whoever the freak is in front of you. I don't care who it is, man. You do what the hell you got to do. Yeah, the Miami Heat, no Jimmy Butler, not their problem. They won the series. Four to one, we could, we could all hype about how they, 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 they lost at home and they lost at home against Cleveland. They're undefeated on the road. That's the true testament of champions. You can win on the road, you become a champion. You're going to win at home. Should they be more dominant at home? Of course they should be. But damn it, you play who's in front of you. The Cleveland, no, no Mitchell, game three, four, well, four and five. Take care of that. Um, who else they just played? Oh no, Halliburton for them. Man, you gotta play who's in front of you. That man, the 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 Warriors, they had a year where Kawhi got hurt, or a couple other players from other teams got hurt, and they went up there and won a championship. That's not their problem. Their job is to play who's in front of them, and they win the game. Because if they don't win the games, nobody's gonna make excuses for them, and nobody's gonna, you know, give them oh, you know, a little tap on the ass to say oh, you know, that's okay. No, you play who's in front of you, and you take advantage of the opportunity. Um, the opportunity right now is, is a championship. They'll play Dallas in championship more than likely, and they'll beat them in five. I'm just proclaiming that. They'll get KP back, big part of their team. They need them. They'll win it. At the end of the day, do I think that Jalen Brown is better than Tatum? I do. I just think that Tatum is the number one option. So he gets all the glory. He gets the ball a little bit more. But I think if you give Jalen Brown his own team, he'll be the number one guy. He'll prove that. Do I think they should break up if they don't win the championship? No way. No way. This team has went to the conference final six times, two championships. They're on the cusp. I don't care. I don't care. Rudy's going to say that they don't play well together. But obviously, they still get into the damn conference championships. They get to the championship. They get to the, the NBA championship two out of the last five years. You, are you going to be mad at that if they don't win it? A little bit. You'll be sad. But they're right there. And they're only going to keep getting better. They're going to keep improving. They're two guys in their prime. Jalen Brown's going to carry them to the championship. He's going to get an MVP this year. And you rock on with them. But um, they beat the Pacers. It was a little rocky. The Pacers had their chance. They blew a couple games. But the testament to the champions, you find a way to get it done. The Celtics find a way to get it done. Um, I'm rocking with them, man. Another series um, against Dallas, they'll win it. They'll win it in five, and they'll win it. We're going, yeah, Celtics. Um, I think Jalen Brown's the best player on that team. 
I have felt that way for quite a long time. I think Jason Tatum is arguably the most overrated player in the NBA for what he's supposed to be to what he is. And I will always I will think that until he shows me different. Is he a, is he a great player? Yeah. But great doesn't mean that you're not overrated because there are people that proclaim him, proclaim him to be a top five player in the NBA. In fact, many people pr- proclaim him to be a top five player in the NBA. I don't think he makes anyone around him better. I don't think he creates for other people. I think he takes way too many threes for what he is. Jalen Brown is a dominant mid-range player. He is an old school player who sometimes gets sucked into shooting threes because of the style of play of the Celtics. That said, the Celtics would be 2-2 right now if it wasn't for Jalen Brown against Indiana. Maybe down 3-1 because Indiana realistically should have won three of those games. If not for horrific coaching, horrific decision-making in the final 90 seconds of these games. There's no reason in the world Indiana should have lost games one, three, three, and four. No reason in the world. I mean, it's, it's incredible how they found ways to lose. Can't make this up. It's, I, I mean, the way they <laughs> lost those three games, it's just like they just did it again. Can't make it and up. Again. Can't make it up. And again. Can't and make it like, up. And I didn't think that the Celtics did anything special. I just thought that the Indiana Pacers hit it here. And 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 so I'm while I'm not gonna sit here and say that the Celtics didn't earn their way to the finals, they absolutely did. But to sit here and act like they didn't have arguably an easier run to the finals than LeBron James ever did in the East. I mean, they caught every team injured. So it's a blessing. It's a blessing. You can sit here and argue with me. It's 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 still a blessing. It's a blessing. There there are people that there. Everyone knows that if Kevin Durant does not get hurt versus Toronto, there's no way that Toronto wins this wins the finals. Yep. Over Golden State. Forget about. And there are people that thought if Clay just didn't get hurt, they'd win. I don't think that would have been the case. I Down think they needed one. Kevin Durant. Yeah. I think they needed. I think they needed Kevin Durant. But if Kevin Durant's not hurt, I think Golden State wins that finals. There are people that believe that if Kyrie Irving is not hurt the first year versus Golden State. That the Cavs would have won those finals. No, I don't. And, think so. and and huh? I don't think so. It's not about what you think. I'm saying I know, there are people. I, I, know, I get. I get. And that. there are people that still. And there are people that still. Kevin. The bronze section will still argue that. So you have this ideology where you say, "Oh, their injuries don't matter," but people will remind you every single day, "Oh, you beat them when they weren't full." The Miami Heat were not just not full. The Miami Heat were minus Jimmy Butler, Terry Rozier, and then Jaime Jaquez, and Duncan Robinson was hurt. So we were without three starters that beat that team last year. That took them seven the year before. So to sit here and act like it doesn't matter, I think it does matter because if you're playing a full-strength Timberwolves or a full-strength Mavericks team, you're not going to win that game in the last minute of that game. You're going to lose. You're going to lose if you play like that for 48 minutes. I think you're going to lose. Do I think the, Maver- the the Celtics will win the finals if they play the Mavericks? Yes. The Timberwolves, if they shock the world and pull off the first time it's ever happened and come back from 3-0, I think the Timberwolves are a problem for them. But I think the Timberwolves have just, that comes down to Ant and Carol Anthony Towns. If those guys do what they're supposed to do, they win. If they don't, they lose. But Jalen Brown and Jimmy and, and Jason Tatum do not play well together. They do not, co- they are like an AAU travel team. Yeah, you one. go, I go, it you go. It doesn't work in the in the elite moments. You lose, which is why they've not won. Ha, Nick, we both know that the that Boston Celtics are ten times more talented than the Miami Heat. Yet the Miami Heat have beaten them in two of three series at full strength. I don't even count this year because we were we had no shot. After I mean, game two gave me that false belief, but. I don't know. What we you had thinking. no shot, huh? I said I don't know what you were thinking. I was getting happy. <laughs> I was getting happy because at the end of the day, when we were at full strength and they were at full strength, we beat them two or three times, and as an eight seed on their home floor in Game Seven, and wiped them out in the bubble, and needed a referee to steal a freaking three pointer from Max Struess to cost us Game Seven because he never stepped on that damn line. So, I think they're a different but, team, though. 
the main characters are the main characters. The main characters are the main Jaylen characters. Brown but you got to... and Jay Brown and Jason Tatum do not run actions off each other. That's why Chris Tapp Porzingis is so important. Yeah. Because they run actions off of him. So 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 they don't run off each other. And if he doesn't play, they look different. But there's they real, look like it's it's rare it's rare when two wing players run actions off of each other. That's but you have to. Otherwise why? it's AAU park ball. Why? They Are can we run playing actions, in the park? They can run actions with other people because usually they don't run actions off anybody. It's hey, one on one ball the hey, whole time when they get the ball. They don't come off with some screens. He, he handles the ball. Like I'm not that. saying he doesn't come off screens, but there's no actions being run. It's it's a, it's a screen for him to score. Yeah, because they run that five out, you know, this dribble penetrate kick. If you if you break which, the hand down, which we've proven, if you just stay with the shooters and make them sh- make twos, they can be beaten rather easily if you just make them shoot twos because they don't know what to do with themselves when they're when they're not making threes when they're not shooting threes. I, I don't like the way they play. They're just so fucking talented as a group. Derek White's the X factor. Derek White has changed that team. I know you like Drew Holiday. To me, Drew Holiday is marginally better than Marcus Smart. Very similar type of player. No, no. He shoots a little. He shoots a little bit better. He shoots better. He's smarter with the ball. He doesn't make the decisions. Again, he don't, he don't marginally, take the, he's the marginally Ill, better. The Ill advised because Drew, because well, Drew Holiday well, Marcus, last year, well, Drew Holiday last year was well, barbecue fucking well, chicken was, for Jimmy Butler. He was barbecue, and he couldn't stop nobody. He was barbecue and chicken. He got but Marcus, but Marcus Jimmy. Smart is notoriously the, known for the, taking bad fine. shots and, at and, the and time where he not should, he shouldn't and be they, it. And you know what? In one year he did it, and they beat us. And he definitely did. <laughs> and he beat us. So he has those moments. Whereas the, he played the Bucks last year and won four one, and Drew Holiday couldn't do anything against Jimmy Butler. And Drew Holiday's supposed to be an elite defensive player. Yeah, but Mark, but Marcus Smart does a whole lot better on him. No, he does not. Marcus Smart he does has better. A, Marcus Smart has a, a gang of players that he can rely on to <clears throat> switch on to him. Because Marcus Smart oh, so, got so so so, they put, so, they put so you're Jack, telling me they put Jay 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 Giannis, Giannis can't, can't can't switch on to oh, fucking Jimmy, Jimmy Butler. Giannis can't guard anybody on the fucking perimeter. You see, him, he moves like a fucking perimeter. Deer. He moves, perimeter. He moves like Jimmy a Butler deer. can't shoot. No, he he shot forty. He shot forty percent for the playoff last year in the threes. Don't do that. He can't shoot. From three man. last year, what did he shoot? What did he, he shoot in the playoffs? Shoot. What did he shoot Fine. against? Fine, he shot okay. in the playoffs. So but he can't shoot consistently. So and if he's, he's shooting back. over a six, if he's shooting over a six three guard, he's really? shooting over a six three guard. If you're shooting he, that over a seven foot center, it's a different shot. No, no, he proved it's not, last year. It's not a different shot. shot. No, but it's not he, a different shot. But Giannis can't get her into Jimmy like that because he get blown by. You see how Giannis moves? He moves like a deer. Yes, Brooke Lopez he, waiting. He moves like a deer in headlights, man. On the, do, you remember, on the do, you, do, you, do you remember when we lost to the fucking Bucks 4 3 0 or whatever? 4 0? Yeah, I remember that. Jimmy couldn't what shoot. What happened? Jimmy couldn't, Jimmy, couldn't shoot. Shoot. <laughs> Jimmy couldn't shoot. 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 And when he drove, what happened? But last Lopez, year, but Lopez, Lopez was waiting. But last year, he shot. I mean, yeah. there's, a, there's a difference. But, it, but Drew Holiday is, all I'm saying is Drew Holiday is not this much better than Marcus no, Smart. Yes, he, uh, it's like this. Mm-hmm. It's not like this. Come on. It's like He this. averaged 12 a game this year, Dick. It's well, not, it's not, it's not, it's not, he averaged less, less assists than Marcus it's Smart. It's not a justified point. So, like how you talk about Rudy no, Gobert, it's, it's not, it's don't matter it's either. Impact, it's impact, it's impact. How are he getting it? How are he Marcus, doing Marcus it? Marcus Smart was the point guard on the team that went to the finals two years ago. Yeah, he, and then, and then, we, and then we all, he, and then we all crucified them no, for no, not no, having, no, 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 for no. not having a point guard in that series. No, 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 no. Who, 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 who could put Jason oh, Brown and oh, Tatum oh, in, in the life? Are we gonna, are we gonna, are we gonna absolve Jason Tatum of being oh, no, 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 absolutely no. fucking terrible? No, he shot thirty. Warriors? He shot, um, he, he shot thirty. Terrible. He shot thirty percent and forty five percent for three. Actually, he just couldn't make any limbs or, or mid range jump shots. But again, so you are you absolving the best player on the team? No, I'm I, no. Okay. I'm just saying that. I think is does this blame of third level player or no, fourth guy in the team? All right, so it's becoming hilarious. In the no, 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 no. So the point, else's fault, but the guy the, who's supposed to take the, the fucking home. The point was the point was that Drew Holiday was guarding Jimmy by himself. And no, he wasn't. When it, when no, 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 he wasn't. For the most no, part, for the most part, he was on him. When Jimmy scored part. fifty-six and forty-two, he wasn't being guarded by himself. But okay, for the most part, it was on him. Oh, Marcus, every fucking Marcus time. Marcus could get Darren White to guard him. He get Jason Tatum to guard him. He get Brown to guard him. It was different people that they could throw at him. Shit, they even threw Horford on him. <laughs> so it was different. Horford can't guard a parked car. 
I mean, he could move his feet a little bit last they year. Literally, they've literally crucified Horford every no, fucking no, night. No, last year, saying that Horford older. can't guard nobody. A year change. Look, a year, look, a year change. Do I think? Do I think if they lose, they break these guys up? No, I don't wait. think they'll do. I don't think they do they it. I think they, they should. should. Why? They should. What would they get? They what would they get? For who? For who? What would they get? For what? What, all, what kind of player would you? All, what kind of player would you ask for? First of all, calm down. I'm asking what? you. I'm, how, how You're you not letting me answer. You keep. Jalen Brown is the better player to me, but they'll trade Jalen Brown first. Of, of course. Of course. And they'll get worse for doing it. So they're going to trade the wrong guy because they should trade Tatum if they're going to trade somebody. And they should rely on Brown because Brown shoots at a much higher clip than Tatum. He's more efficient. He doesn't fucking hand the ball over like fucking Tatum does. Tatum is a Tatum is a great player, but Tatum has he's, these moments where he completely is invisible. He has a too much. Too much time. Too, too many five for eight so, teams. How can you be the best player on the team? I didn't say he was. I didn't, you, you, we I, had a, again, we, I know. We had a on this one. I know. So why would I trade him? Because you know what? He does bring more value. So you could get a lot of stuff from him. I don't know what you could get from him, but you get a lot. And yeah, would I be looking at? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Let's see here. Carl Anthony uh, Towns. Carl Anthony Towns could be a fit there. Because Christoph Porzingis is going to be gone in the next two years. He's always injured. He's all, I told you at the beginning of the year, he'd be hurt. I was like, did I tell you that? And he's hurt. He's always hurt. He's always hurt. The comedy is that Christoph Porzingis, if he plays and they play the Mavericks, that was Luka's second guy. So it, it's just it's kind of It will be a great series. Because Kyrie, you got, from, and Kyrie was in Boston. And yeah, Kyrie in Boston. It's, it's storyline the whole nine. But I think there are plenty of guys that you – you're not trading Tatum one for one. No way. You're trading, you're trading Tatum – I mean, Paul George. What well, what's the difference between Paul George playing with with Brown and and Tatum playing with Brown? It's the same thing as Paul George playing with Kawhi. That's well, the well, same well, thing. Well, they don't well, run, well, they don't well, action well, off each other. Well, well, that's because they're always hurt. But for, for one, Paul George is a much better defensive player than Jason Tatum. Much better. He's actually six ten. He's not six eight. He's six ten, and he is more efficient, in my opinion. He is a like I said, better defend better defensive player. He doesn't need the ball. He doesn't need the ball the way Tatum needs the ball. I'm, I, why does a team like Boston have their leading assist guy with four assists? They, they score at a level that no one else scores at, but their best assist guy has four assists. Why? They should have a, their, best, their point guard should have 10 assists a game. Everybody touches the ball. But you're the point. If the point guard should be having, they should have someone that's averaging eight assists on this team at the very least. They should be. I, I just think that you could, you could trade. Tatum, this is not going to happen. People are going to say I'm crazy. It's not going to happen. But how long do you continue the science project if they lose again? Um, uh, how long do you run the science project paying Jalen Brown $304 million? Tatum's going to get broke off $400 million. Would uh, you agree, Donald, on that one? Yeah. Mm, probably. They're going to break because yeah, that new team deal is going to pop off. He's gonna get they're going to they're gonna pay him $400 million. So you're going to have $700 million on two players? And you can't win the big fucking game? They're the most talented team in the East, yet the sixth seed should have won three of those first four games if their coach had any fucking brains. And Tyrese Howard hey, 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 they, they, off his knee. That, that coach beat your team in the championship. Oh, you mean with the Mavericks? Yep. Oh, <clears throat> man, they had Dirk Nowitzki and a bunch of role players that know their, knew their role. And shut their mouths. <laughs> That's your line today. I'm tired of rooting today, y'all. Y'all get me off this fucking podcast. I'm done with this motherfucker. Listen, today's <laughs> episode was very basketball centric. We went to the association. We went to the WNBA and back to the association. Guys, this is going to be our basketball edition. Before that, I want Nick to um, announce next week he's going to be introducing some new content that we'll be chiming in on but as you guys know he is a cfl legend and we're going to be introducing a lot more CFL. you, you gotta run that back again I'm, I'm sorry we didn't hear that i'm sorry we didn't hear that you didn't hear that okay no uh next week we're going to be introducing some cfl content it's going to be spearheaded by nick as he says before every episode he's a three-time champion respect his name uh, we have some announcements that we're going to be announcing very soon, but we are going to be adding in some CFL content that come on now. Podcast is part of a larger um, 
idea for us to come on now network. So you're going to be seeing a lot more uh, opportunities to speak and talk more shit down the line. So Nick, get them excited for what they have to hear as the CFL schedule starts, season starts next week. Man, man. We're coming up on another great year of CFL football, man. A lot of exciting moments. Now, y'all might say, hey, Nick, you played for Winnipeg. You're a little bit biased to them winning the championship. You're damn right. You're damn right. I might be a little bit biased on this. A little bit. But I'm going to have some integrity, as my man Rudy says. I'm going to have some decorum and some integrity when I bring these things to you about the CFL game, how exciting it is, how fun it is, man. Um, going to and out. That's what we're going to call the segment. It's going to be to and out. Um, it's just going to be a good time, man. It's going to be uh, talking about the rules and how it's different from the NFL game, the waggle, and how explosive the sport can be. Um, these quarterbacks that are great in the league, the defenses that are great, these DNs that are doing good jobs, these old linemen that are, that, are, that are blocking these people, these running backs that are explosive, these receivers that are making top-notch money who are catching the ball on you, bombing you. They even bombed me a couple of times. I won't show it on air because – I still have some memories about that. Dominique Rhymes, I'll see you, bro. I might come out of retirement for you. I'm, I got you, bro. Don't think I ever forgot about you, bro. You got me two times in one game. It don't happen often. Um, I don't really give up plays like that. But, hey, man, it's going to be amazing content. Great year coming up. CFL Championship in BC this year. We will be there more than likely. Right. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah Hopefully. Vancouver. It, it will be in the dome, Rudy. It's in the dome, Rudy. Don't worry about that. It won't be snow. It'll be nice weather, nice warm weather. It might be a little bit of rain. You paying? Somebody, somebody paying. We don't be, we don't worry about that oh, part. Well, paying. Okay, don't paying. worry about that part. We'll figure that part out later. But man, it's gonna be a great year. It's gonna be fun. Um, y'all gonna learn so much more about it. Um, Rudy's gonna chime in because because one thing about Rudy that I know, he's gonna find out about it. He's gonna watch it and he's gonna be very fucking opinionated and he's gonna tell me his thing. I'm gonna have to tell him how wrong he is. But he's going to learn it, and we're going to talk about it. Can't wait. I can't fucking wait. I mean, it can't be worse. It can't be worse than NFL. No, it's fun. NFL's horrible. No, this is, this is actually a fun league. You get to celebrate. Some people even drink beers with the fans get, after, the, after they you score a touchdown. Hit? You, you get to hit? You get to hit. You get to hit. They actually you don't get, like, personal so, fouls breathing on somebody? So, so, Rudy, they actually brought up on the, 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 the little stocking caps. So... They're allowing players to wear them in the games this year. I don't know who's going to do it, but um, but eventually it's going to be mandatory, as we well, all know. Whoever, That's what whoever, does that, whoever does that should be man card. Rule. Eventually it's going to be mandatory. We all know that. But, um, yeah, they get the hit out there. Um, special teams is exhilarating. They, they, they have touch. They have the return kicks, punt returns, kick returns, um, trick plays. It's a, new, it's a trick play um, where actually – you can kick the ball. You can throw the ball to a receiver, and he has to just kick the ball across the line of scrimmage. If he recovers it, it's an onside kick, and you get a first down. Yeah. We're going to put it up there in the videos. We're going to show you all how it looks, and then it'll be from there. But it's, it's a tremendous game, man. We can't wait to talk about it. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dom. <laughs> With that being said, uh, Rudy reminded me that uh, UFC 302 is coming up. So, Rudy, if there's anything you want to say about UFC 302 before we jump out, because we're going to be doing a special combat corner for 302. Um, and uh, I'm a Poirier fan. I met him a few times. Good guy. I'm excited about that fight. Any, any, anything you have before, I mean, we're going to do a, a special on it. I mean, I'm, I'm stoked about it. I'm, I'm excited about the fight card. I, I, I think uh... – it's one that people. It's, it's this Dustin Poirier's last last hurrah. Like he wins, I think he will fight again and defend his belt at least once. If he loses, he'll retire. Um, the card itself, I think, is a good card. I'm excited about the card overall. You know, I, I'm actually. I'll tell you right now, Donald. The card that I'm really excited about is 304. 304 is stacked. And I did do a little bit of a combat corner last week because I didn't want to let all the stuff that's passed by. But we definitely need to talk about it more when, as that comes closer because that 304 is big time. But I'm a big Poirier fan. This morning they had him on first take. When I say that was the most cringeworthy interview I've ever seen, it was cringeworthy. It was so bad. Listening to Stephen A. Smith and Molly Corum trying to interview an MMA fighter 
when they don't know fuck all about MMA, it was kind of embarrassing. Like ESPN does a disservice to me at times with the UFC. Like you want to be this partner to the UFC. Where are your UFC people? Where are your MMA experts? Like, I don't want to see Stephen A. Smith doing interviews on MMA fighters. He's already proven he has no respect for them when he made the comment about Donald, Donald Cerrone. But he said that he, he quit in a fight as if he's clearly never seen the Cowboy fight before. But ESPN got to do a better job with that because, you know, Poirier, I think Poirier deserves a better interviewer, interviewing group or whatever. But, yeah, that, that, that interview was cringeworthy. But I'm excited about the fight. I will be in a hospital watching it. My wife is going to give birth tomorrow, so I'll be there all weekend. And then on Saturday, I'll be, I'll have my phone. And I'll be watching it on my phone because I ain't missing that fight. Don't care about no. I won't. I won't be. At, I won't be at a bar though. Don't worry. Oh, that old. wouldn't. That would not be allowed. Oh. I'm not. I'm not Gilbert Arenas. Baby, you okay? You okay? Or Brandon Jennings or Kenyon Martin or Mark Jackson, all those other fucking clowns. You okay over there, babe? Okay. Oh, darn fight. Oh, shoot. Get she'll, be watching it. she'll be watching it with me, I'm sure. Push, push, push. push. No, no, no. She's giving birth tomorrow. That's on Saturday. Oh, okay. So we're good. Okay, so, okay. But the, also the Panthers, 2 2 in the Rangers. Game of five is tomorrow in uh, New York. Let's go, Panthers. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, the first sporting event I ever went to was a Rangers game. Fun fact crazy but um with that being said we're gonna sign off this episode of come on now we are excited to come back next week as we're gonna be switching some things up on when you guys receive our content and it's gonna be a lot more content coming your way so please get excited for the second half of 2024 you guys have been with us the start of this ride and so we're gonna get more fun rudy please let them know where they can find us as they keep getting the numbers up we are we are now up to we had a little slowdown for about a couple of weeks, but things have come back around, you know, because I, I went crazy. But we are up to 661 subscribers oh, on that, YouTube, so more. thank you. We, we, we're doing well. We appreciate you. Get us to 1,000, but you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast and at Twitter X at Come On Now Pod. And, of course, follow us on YouTube. Please subscribe and uh, get us to a thousand by the end of uh, July. I think that's reasonable. June. I think so. But that's We're all. We're not I asking got. for too much. We're not Here's asking you. for donations yet. So let's hear it now. Um, <laughs> thank you for oh. your time. We'll be back next week. Good one. Did he do it again? Please, God, where'd he go? Oh, my God. Please tell me this nigga fucked up. Oh, he's still there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 Boy. Boy. That's your left left No, no, no. I just, I ended the session. Just... What'd you say, Nick? No, I thought no, you left again. I did leave. Oh, because I'm. Oh, you just want to make sure that the thing got the thing uploaded properly. Is it good? Good. My friend, ninety nine percent uploaded. Yeah, it's uploaded. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, really, really a fucking, fucking gasket thing. today. No, I didn't do that. Where did he go? No, 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 no. no, no. When you started what? sweating profusely, I, I am profusely sweating. Arguing, Are you yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got well. eleven ten thousand views on Carmine McLean's video. Okay. It's the second, second highest, highest video on YouTube. On YouTube. What's, the What's the first? first? Is it, is it Caitlin, Caitlin Clark? Clark? Cheryl swoops to Caitlin Clark. Okay. okay. Damn, Damn YouTube, the YouTube is different, man. It's a different algorithm. Mm -hmm. I be trying, I be to, trying have to have all four. four. My phones. Oh, I have, I two, have phones, two phones, one TV, one TV and another and TV. TV all put, in. put it on one point five. Oh, I could do that. 
Oh shit. Yeah, it'll go faster. I'll learn from you later. You alright, Donald? Yeah, I'm texting my colleagues because I have to finish this proposal. Um, I might, I might, I'm gonna do, do a little bit of today. Yeah, then, so what did you think, what did you think of like taking a comment from YouTube and people, uh-huh. YouTube or Instagram, and then do a response to that? Or Instagram and then do a response to that? To what? To what? He says I'm about Saturday. He says I'm about Saturday. Oh, I thought oh, I was going to do a little something. something. Yeah, yeah so I was saying, like, I, the idea I had was, like, take comment a comment from someone oh, you on our, one of our videos. You want to do that Saturday? And, no, you can do it. Okay. You can jump on and just record and I'll, and I'll, and I'll edit it and post it. Okay. It just, just gives, like, you FaceTime and gives mm-hmm. other people FaceTime. Like, okay, cool. Like what Donald did in his blanket. Yeah. I might do it in a robe. Just be, I mean, keep it under 10 minutes. Okay. You need a robe? Huh? Not a Not robe, robe but, um, but um, I got a, a silk pajama set. set. You should come out and um, some, some mesh yeah. shirt. Uh, nah. You might as well, float, might as well float in your leopards, bro. Like Martin, float in your leopards. Bro, well, what if I do What if I do? What this? happened to Martin's face? face? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You got a stroke. Oh, oh, but but his, his skin, skin looks, looks like he like got like fifty, 50 years, years older. older. Yeah, I mean, did you, you see? Did you see the video? Like, like his commercial with Jimmy, Jimmy Butler? Butler? Yeah, well, you have a stroke. You look like he got like, like fifty layers of Botox. Botox. Your facial uh, muscles, like one side of his face droop. What if I come out? Oh my god! What if I come out like, like this? Oh god! Oh my god! Carl, my name is Carl. All right, All right, man. man. You, you got to work with Donald. Like, I didn't even know how to end this. I did. What the fuck is this guy doing? And your name is Carl? Uh, and you're going to speak Patois? Yeah. Bye. Like your name Bye. 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 All right, man. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.